But people are still playing. Orchestras are still existing. Computers are still existing. Everything is coexisting. Just like movies, TVs, internet, Netflix, everything surviving. So that way I feel like even AI is just a tool. And those who can beat it will be surviving. They'll be doing amazing things by themselves. And AI will exist for lazy people. I also wanted to save time for um, audience questions. So does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask? So my question is obviously every piece of music you've worked on, um, we all have a lot of favourite songs of yours. Every song has come with challenges, um, every piece of music you've worked on. So I just wanted to ask which song or which music has been the biggest challenge in your life that you've worked on and how has that shaped you as a person in both your personal life and your career as well? Um. So there are two ways. One, one is uh, whatever comes naturally I compose. Sometimes I feel like I need to do something orchestral or something in jazz or form which I don't know anything. So uh, I keep doing it and I still feel like it's not good and I keep again <coughs> attempting it till I'm happy that uh, it may not be a replica of what I'm trying to do but it'll take me in the way that it's satisfactory. And here I don't decide it myself. I have a director. I have a lyricist, I have singers, so we vibe together and I look at their reactions and sometimes stop at, at a point, it's like, okay, they like it, leave it. <laughs> and, uh, and this aspect of discovery is what keeps me going on. I will get bored with the work. If you know everything, know to do everything, it's boring. And there's always something new, there's always something in there. The new is not about working hard, it, the new is about um, stopping at a certain place or throwing out all your old habits. Oh, this is the kind of sound I like or this is the uh, mode I like. Throw that and, and they say, no, like if you're very good at the right hand, try your left hand. <laughs> and uh, so that's very good advice. I feel like if you're not comfortable with something, you'll always end up doing something different. Thank you. Yeah. Um, let's go to the number on the front row. Um, hi, pleasure to meet you, just like everybody else here. Um, so I wanted to ask you, could you please share with us what's the most inspirational situation in your journey? Uh, I know there must be quite a few, but if you can tell us one among them that really molded you uh, or and share one of your favorite songs. We love many of your songs, like really dearly. What's your one go-to song, if you can pick a few of them? Yeah. Um, Thank most you. Most inspirational moment? Most inspirational Situation moment. or moment in your life, some incidents happen and it really molds you or like as a person, okay, this is what I'm going to do or like some, something that inspired you around your profession or molded you as a person, any either of that, um, any situation that's so close to your heart and one song that is close to your heart. Yeah, I think, um, you know, music creation is, uh, you can't take credit for everything because sometimes, you know, there's a beautiful lyric which comes in and there's a singer and you just do your part of, as, a, as a producer, as a composer and the magic happens when it comes together and you feel like, oh my God, what's happened? So you are ready for, you're ready to take whatever is coming and you need to recognize it. Sometimes you have a different thought and something else happens and you need to recognize that moment and saying that, oh my God, this is magic. So I'm going to throw out that what I had in mind and accept what is coming. And to know that there's something which is given birth, to recognize that as a gift, which sometimes you fail to see. Sometimes, you know, I, I'm, um, I have so much of, tension, you know, I have to do this, I have to do that, somebody's got to go for shooting and they want a song and somebody, somebody wants some string arrangement and, and then family, my wife says, I want to do something, take me out and, and suddenly there's a moment of beauty, you know, you're stuck somewhere, your car is broken down and there's a park. So that's when you realize it's God giving you a chance to breathe, not the car stuck is not a problem but it's a solution for you. 
So these are the unexpected inspirational moments, I feel like. Uh, for instance, I had, um, I was working on many projects doing Dulce, and I was like, oh my God, this is becoming so excruciatingly uh, intolerable, um, this kind of pressure. And then suddenly Maniratnam said, can you go to Ladakh and record some sounds for this movie? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Those three days, I met the Dalai Lama, and I felt like, this is it. You know, you, you automatically get what, you know, so, Inspiration, again, is standing, um, going to Hollywood, and all the people whom you love are sending wine bottles to me for the nominations for the Oscars, like Tom Cruise and, and Spielberg and all those people. So it felt unreal. I was constantly trying to know what's happening in my life. <laughs> That's one. And then the other one is, of course, composing Mahathujay Salam Ande Matram, my album, where People who, don't, who didn't know anything, don't, didn't even know my spelling, were singing my songs. In, in, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari to the far east, northeast to Mumbai and every village. And that song is reaching even now when you look at that whole stadium is singing the song. And that's done with such purity. And Bharat Balani and all of us, Mehboom, that um, it's still inspiring. So a thing of beauty is a joy forever. So, like, so uh, that's one. And and my daughter sings, has done an album now. So she's done the Lata Mangeshkar classics. And to see her shine, singing with the orchestra, that was inspirational. <laughs> you can't pull somebody out and say, you have to become a musician, they have to become an... And every time our students from our conservatory, if you look at Lydian or Palak or Sam, they're shining abroad. You know, Lydian won $1 million playing the piano, impressing the whole world, I don't know, five years back. The Sam who did the same thing, and this Palak now a new girl who's who won gold and platinum in America and Canada. That's when you realize, oh, you're doing something to the society, which is great. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Favorite song is yet to come. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go to the number on the Axe you, I mean, your sort of collaboration with Mani Ratnam is legendary, right? And you work with so many different filmmakers. Um, how does that collaboration work out between filmmaker and music director, especially with like such vast artistic visions that are so different from each other? Thank you. I think uh, um, you adore somebody and you respect somebody. It's not about what they're asking you to do. It's about what can you do for them to grow together, to shine together, to explore the unknown. And even now when we sit together, we just sing, um, I'll just pick the most odd idea and give it up. What about this idea? Can you make it work? And he'll say, oh, this is interesting. And then he'll change the character in the, in the story to fit that in, because it sounds in interesting to him. And that's what I think creative people should do. Each one, they should be surprising each other so that you're pushing each other's, uh, breaking the comfort zone moment and asking them to go to this unknown. Unknown is a great word because you know when you go to a place that if we feel great, everybody's gonna feel great about it. Because it, it takes a lot to go out of the clutter and find something unique. And that it can't be done by one person, it can be done only with the whole team coming together. Let's go to the member on the second bench then. I would like to thank you first of all. Like I saw one of your interview in my darkest times and it came, helped me to came out, come out of it. And I've seen you speaking a lot about spirituality and like, but it's very brief. Why can't you like, like talk more about spirituality and help us a lot, you know, to come out of our darkest times? I couldn't. Can you just talk slowly? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like, yeah, I saw one of your interview and in my darkest times and it helped me to come out of it and it's about spirituality and why can't you talk more about it and it might help someone who's suffering like me to come out of it. I still can't understand. <laughs> you want to come here? <laughs> Sorry. There's a lot of reverb Sorry. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So one of my darkest times Oh. Your interview helped me out oh, okay. to come out of it. Like, it's all about spirituality. Why can't you talk more about spirituality? 
<coughs> we all have dark times and uh, one thing is definite that we it's it's a small little travel in this world we were born and we're going to go it's not a permanent place for us where we're going to go we don't know it each one you know according to their own imagination and beliefs we believe that so the the one thing i in my life i realized when i had suicidal thoughts when i was young my mother used to say when you live for others you won't get all these thoughts she yeah, i think that's one of the most beautiful advice i got from my mother she said when you live for others you're not selfish and there's a meaning to your life so i took it really seriously and whether you're composing for somebody you're writing for something you're buying food for a you know for a person who can't afford it or you just smile at someone i think these are the things which keep us going and uh, also we have limited knowledge about what future we have you think that you don't have a future but there's something extraordinary waiting for you that one little move you're going to make is going to change people's lives so if you look at all these things and then if you have hope i think that's what keeps me going sometimes i feel like i've done it all is everything feels like a repeat cycle and then you realize there's a more um, there's a bigger role for you and uh, that role comes why that role because of the experience and because of the accessibility of things and what you can give you know if i for me it's music of course it's um, meeting people like you who inspire me a lot and uh, being an educator and the score cross pollination of talents at a school or I'm asking you questions like somebody said they they're learning geography i said what is the geography you're learning what what can i gain from you somebody said political science somebody said uh, uh economics management i said all all of these are important aspects of life and i'm so limited with one certain knowledge that's it and i'm i'm fascinated to see all of you doing different things especially management <laughs> basically my question was do you have a signature in your music there are some composers in the western world that have a particular signature during their music compositions that say you know that's my mark do you have something that we should have noticed do you think i have a signature <laughs> yeah i think it's i think your music is you know so, it creates so a certain type of mood so <laughs> Okay, but you should have one, right? That you think. Yeah, so that that's a trick actually if you you really believe that you, this is my signature, you, you start becoming repetitive. And then your your whole output says that oh, he's sounding the same. So for me, I just run away from my signatures. <laughs> the signature is something which you guys know, but I don't know. I'm already running and you know, oh, this is the chord which he uses or oh, this is the kind of idea which comes and this is the relief which happens, this is the drop which happens. it comes instinctively even even though i try to run away from that and sometimes you know you you get away from what you love to become something else but still that signature is inherent in it and you guys know more than uh, what i really i always try to run away from it and try to see where i can go dangerously <laughs> yeah thank you um let's go to the number on the end of Hi, uh, as a fellow Chennai person, I just wanted to ask you if there's something specific about the city that inspires your music, and if there's any specific song of yours that you relate to the city. If you could sing a bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll answer one question. <laughs> the the city of Chennai, um, you know, when I I was what. Six or five years old. I remember that um, my father used to work in a studio called ABM Studios, and it had four different um, places: ABM C, ABM RR, ABM A, or something like that. And each one would be uh, all different South Indian language. One would be Tamil, one would be Kannada, one would be Malayalam, one would be Telugu. So I saw the city embracing. It was the melting point of all these four languages in the south. and that is one thing which inspired me and even though now each one has moved away 
and becoming bigger. There's Ramaji Rao, you know, in, in Andhra Pradesh, and there's the Kannada film industry has now become so big. Malayalam film industry, same way. So I felt like the legacy has to be kept. That's one of the reasons why I started the school and also started the YM Studios, the soundstage, so that just as a reminder that Chennai was the fulcrum of all these places. Um, let's go to the member on the front row. Um, I'm going to directly ask you to sing something, but something very <laughs> specific, actually. I hope you really don't mind. Um, one of my favorite songs uh, that you have composed is from the movie um, Swades called Ye Jo Des Hai Tera. And there's a specific part of that song. You recorded a version of it with the Berkeley Indian Ensemble. And there's a part in that version where um, you sing the I couldn't possibly try to sing and tell you which part it is, but it's a hmm, 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 that part. I was wondering if, uh, I was, I was wondering if you could sing that for us. Uh, it would be a really, really treasured so memory. So I signed for me. to them. Actually, they said, "Can you sing?" I said, "No," and so they signed them. <laughs> That's not a condition. I was wondering how these occur to you. I mean, the hymns, you know. How does it come to you? Is it, um, do you think it's a function of practice or is there something that's really human about understanding just what kinds of songs are the kind of, you know, sounds that we relate to as human beings? So, um, interesting. So these are not ideas which are preset. So when I have a song, I, uh, I just, there's a loop and then I keep singing on it for like, Sometimes I feel good about it. I keep saying in like 20 minutes. And there's some good ideas, some very bad ideas. And so then I forget about it. A month later, I go back to it. And whether I'm, I'm traveling on the flight, or so I have more time with the laptop, then I chop the pieces which I think could be interesting. And I mark them. This could be a humming. This could be a shenai. This could be either the verse. This could be the bridge. And, and then I present it to the lyric writer and the, and the director. And then we start working on it. And sometimes you feel like um, there are two different tunes for antras. Antras is like the, after the mukhra it comes. And you feel like the first one is better if it repeats. Or sometimes, no, no, I like the different tune on the second one. So it's like you shoot a lot, like how filmmakers do, they shoot a lot of rush and then edit what they like. So I do that sometimes. So that um, we get interesting ideas which are unpredictable but it goes with the feel of the song, yeah. Let's go with the member on the second row. Hello, hi, I'm Abhishan, and I'm from Sri Lanka. You have a lot of fans in Sri Lanka. So uh, my question to you is that uh, throughout your music industry and music journey, uh, you, apart from traditional music, uh, you have used a lot of tech in your music as well. So I just want to know your take of AI in the music industry, and how do you look at it? <clears throat> so, I came into the industry, uh, I was full-fledgedly playing film industry at 84. 84, I was playing keyboards for a composer called Ramesh Naidu in Telugu. And he had given, my mom came to the school and said, this guy wants you permanently, so I'm sorted, I don't have to rent equipments, you go and play, no school for you. So that's what happened. So one year of playing, I'd collected some money and I'd ordered a computer called the CX-5 Yamaha music computer. So this computer, you had to feed in the velocity, the note, the length, the octaves, the sound, everything. For one note, you had to feed like seven commands. And Mr. Ilya Raja heard about that and he called me. Ilya Raja is one of the most legendary composers from the South. He, he called me and he said, I want you to be my operator or whatever. So I, we program every night you finish recording, you'll come and at the end of it, it was a piece from a movie called Punnage Manan. He said, this is it, all, all you guys will lose jobs. He jokingly said that right, to people. But people are still playing, orchestras are still existing, computers are still existing, everything is coexisting. Just like movies, TVs, internet, Netflix, everything's surviving. So that way I feel like even AI is just a tool and those who can beat it will be surviving. They'll be doing amazing things by themselves and AI will exist for lazy people. 
And um, so this is my answer, I think. Yesterday when I went for this um, Newberry uh, version of Lord of the Rings musical, which I had co-composed, is when I realized, because the, the same actor is playing accordion, and other actors are playing mandolin, and guitars, and, and xylophones, and celest, and I was so fascinated seeing that, how humans rise up to a level where nobody can match up to it. It was fantastic in the watermill theater. And this is my thing to them, they're like, guys like you can beat AI very easily. A collect, you know, collection of people like that, who, yeah. Um, let's go to the member on the front row here. Um, thank you so much for that wonderful interview and the, the questions you've answered. Um, your musical tradition comes from everywhere. You've got Karnataka, Hindustani, classical. You said you had Chinese musical influences. You had influences from all across the world. You've mastered lots of techniques and achieved lots of milestones. What's next? What do you want to learn next? I mean, what's left? If anything, if not, what do you want to make? I think if I songwriting is a, is a refining process. <clears throat> you never master it. Sometimes the most beautiful composition that come earlier, and sometimes I feel like we can still do much more. The combination of words and the combination of words and a tune together is a gift, I feel. When you don't deserve it comes sometimes, and you deserve it doesn't come. <laughs> and so it's like a prayer, you're just standing there, it's like, am I going to get the gift today or not? That's what makes you humble. People say, how are you humble? Because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And uh, so that is something which I, I'm looking forward to. In, in English, in, in Tamil, in Hindi, in whichever language I'm composing, to have that magic intact and do things which, like for instance, the, the song Kun Fai Kun, uh, was composed for the movie Rockstar, and it's crossed across people, uh, faiths, languages. Uh, the president of Berkeley said this, it's one of his favorite songs. And he doesn't, I don't think he understood anything about it, but it's just the feel, the vibe, and what magic the lyrics did, what the tune did. And you're always looking for, you, you compose a hundred songs and you get like five of those, <laughs> or one of those. So that keeps me, is there a particular vibe or something that's very difficult to master right now that you'd like to say in five years, be like, I've learned this one skill or I've got this one thing that I've done? I couldn't hear you, sorry. <coughs> sorry. Keep it um, I'm saying that if, um, is there a particular vibe or a feeling or a technique that in five years from now that you're like, oh, I've done this, you know? Yeah, I think I, Sometimes the most beautiful things come from people who are not even recognized. There was a composer, um, I think there's a song, um, Dama Dama Kalandar. And it's one of the most amazing compositions which you ever done in Yemen, Rag. And I feel like, who's this guy? <laughs> and then he was from Pakistan. Two years back, he died. He, they couldn't afford us medical bill, nothing. We thought it's a folk song. Then I heard about this gentleman who passed away, his son sold budgies or what has to pay for his thing. And then you realize the most beautiful composition which everybody took, but he was never recognized. So there's always a search of how can you master a rag? How can you um, get something beautiful from an already defined rule? I think it's again a gift, it's a blessing. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go to the member in the second row. Um, so my question is, um, so it's a personal experience. So my parents liked your song that is in the 90s and early 2000s, we followed your songs and now even the current generation are following your songs. So how do you keep up with the generation trend and giving us all beautiful songs all together? I get bored. <laughs> <laughs> and when I get bored, I feel like, ah, oh, why are you doing the same thing? I, I question myself and say, what else is there? And uh, so I listen to a lot of things on TikTok and on Spotify. And I say, why can't they do this? Why can't they do this? And I said, why can't you do it? Question comes to you. 
and and then it changes and so whatever i feel like i should drop i drop whatever i should retain from my experience i retain that and and most of it is actually um the lyrics and the lyrics which can subliminally do something to you and that's one experience i would say which comes only through experience in life where you just don't fill up the song but you fill up it something really solid that is just a simple line but it means so many things to so many different people yeah thank you oh, let's get to the member at the front here so the question is it's from my mum what's your favorite breakfast because they wanted to know you as a person what's your favorite breakfast and the, yeah and the second question is what's your comfort place for a person whenever you you're happy or when you're low whatever you just want to have a chat who's that one person you go to or a place and the third question is my grandmother <laughs> just three questions three sorry. Generations. none of them are my questions <laughs> so not taking credits so third question is my grandmother um, being a south indian she can sing in all four languages but all she always says uh, whenever she sing in kannada there's something about kannada that hits her heart so is there a language when you compose or you sing that feels like okay this is it i love it this is my place so these three questions so I, as i told you i grew up with all four languages mm -hmm. even though i'm tamil yeah and i've learned many beautiful things from tirukkural and for for instance it says if you hang out with intelligent people you can become intelligent if you hang out with fools you become a fool very simple <laughs> and um, my favorite breakfast is as you idli sambar dosa <laughs> and my mom said if it, if she were in this room and she guessed it you would say either idli or dosa but she was like my first choice is idli second choice is dosa but if she were in this room she would have served you idli because in her bag she would bring both idli and dosa yes so this is what she wanted to tell you and the th second question was uh, your uh, go to person or a place a comfort person my go to person actually my wife yeah. because <laughs> <laughs> because i think marriage is about a spiritual connection and it's a comfort zone and even if somebody is wrong if even if i'm wrong she corrects me and um, yeah thank you sir okay. um hello sir my name is mohini it's really a huge uh, honor for us all to be here and i always um think to myself that it's just um surreal that we're all sort of in the same era as you so just thank you so much for the music that you give us it's really beautiful um i actually want to talk about the conservatory work that you do and the education work that you do and um a lot of my friends and peers in india so whether it's neesha shetty abhilasha sinha so many young artists who you work with uh, you've given them such an incredible platform and given them so many uh, amazing opportunities uh, so my question is what do you gain from the young artists that you interact with do you feel that you've changed as an artist with um, with the time that you've spent with them thank you so much and thank you for this talk okay <laughs> So it's a question or a statement? <laughs> it was a question. I really want to know what you uh, what you have what, yeah. what's changed in you as an artist yeah, uh, so over these interactions. You know when I work with uh, younger artists and I find something unique and then I send a message on DM on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and they said is it really you? <laughs> and then I go on Zoom and said yes and then my assistant and all of us are there and then we talk to them. and uh, so when i started uh, performing you know i used to see uh, great singers like sp balas subramaniam and chitra all of them amazing but rest of them were so bad <laughs> that they they were out of tune so i thought maybe light music is meant to be like that out of tune and i never used to take it seriously even though we try hard to sing in tune and then comes neeti mohan and nisha shetty and junita gandhi and then it's like oh my god how are they doing it how are they singing so much in tune and that actually pushes all the other people from previous generations to rise up and this is what i want to happen on stage i want everybody else to be better than me so that i rise up to that level so we pick and choose every artist for the stage like that so nisha shetty is one like that she's amazing yeah um let's go to the member in the middle Good evening sir <coughs> It's my great honor to see you live and to talk to you. I have a question. How can a bathroom singer like me <laughs> become a singer like you? Is there any hope? 
practice 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 and there's no a question from a mom <laughs> yeah there's no age limit for excellence i'm still learning <laughs> i'm still learning because there's so many things which uh, as a singer i used to think i'm just a composer who cares what i sings right and then you feel like oh no actually people like my voice i have to sing better then i had this um, duet with uh, this middle eastern singer called sami yusuf we did a duet together then i realized how superior he was and what style he had is nuances is dynamics i said man i need to sing better than this guy so i started practicing i started practicing literally and then i saw lata mangeshkar ji before every concert she she has one hour of riyas even after achieving so much this is in uh, 2007 8 and then i realized there's no for practice there's no age or no experience or no superiority everybody needs to practice every because it's a it's a workout for your voice so if you practice probably 5 6 hours a day you can be better than anybody so, yeah and let's go to the member on the third row on the right um so as a tamil girl i'm so thankful for all the tamil music you've put out and my mum went to your concert recently and she really really loved it it was like one of the best nights of her life so thank you so much for giving that her that experience as well My question is something that I struggle with. It's being very confident in my work. I don't compose music, but I have some difficulty with the confidence. And you've released so many songs and music composing is a very vulnerable process. So how do you overcome that and you put out these amazing songs that we all end up loving, but you must have some doubts in your head of like will it be received well or not? Oh yeah. Yeah, I think uh and like the reason why i stick to film industry is we have a support system the support system is the director the support system is he is going to play the song to a driver or a spot boy and if they move he's going to come and tell me hey i played to the driver and he was jamming and he started singing back so we kind of get this vibe when we do a song so we are not uh, so they are the anr people for us and so my job is to give him options so that he picks the right most of the stuff is done by them the picking up the vibing the tick mark um uh, that's it so that's one of the reasons why the volume of work i've done probably more than 200 movies is possible as when you're thinking about five songs for two years thinking that it's going to work or not and you fail you've done your two years of work is gone so this is a the good system which i stick with mm-hmm. yeah. thank you and um one final question um a question that we ask all of our guests if you could leave our members with something to think about for this week what would it be my question is always how do you handle conflict and uh, and the world is filled with conflicts now mm. and how will the younger generation find extraordinary solutions for that because conflict comes from ego conflict comes from the past luggage con it comes from lack of belief in a more superior entity and how do you deal with it will you have each each one's answer will be personal and i'm looking forward to that answer if anybody has a beautiful answer i will take that put it on my timeline <laughs> conflict actually you know i've learned as a family my my wife is from the north she's gujarati i'm tamil so you know that what kind of conflicts i've handled <laughs> in my life so you've almost become like a saint so that's one answer of like from all of you thank you very thank much you. um it's been an honor to have you here today thank you